with him in love because grace and mercy are upon his holy ones and he watches over his elect. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our psalm today is Psalm 24. We will read responsively by half verse. The earth is the Lord's and all that is in it. The world and all who dwell therein. For it is he who founded it upon the seas. And made it firm upon the rivers of the deep. Who can ascend the hill of the Lord? And who can stand in his holy place? Those who have clean hands and a pure heart. Who have not pledged themselves to falsehood, nor sworn by what is a fraud. They shall receive a blessing from the Lord. And a just reward for the God of their salvation. Such is the generation of those who seek him. Of those who seek your face, O God of Jacob. Lift up your heads, O gates. Lift them high, O everlasting doors. And the King of glory shall come in. Who is the King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty. The Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O gates. Lift them high, O everlasting doors. And the King of glory shall come in. Who is he, this King of glory? The Lord of hosts. He is the King of glory. Our second reading today is from Revelation chapter 21, verse 1 to 6a. I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. And I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, See, the home of God is among mortals. He will dwell with them. They will be his peoples, and God himself will be with them. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. Death will be no more. Mourning and crying and pain will be no more, for the first things have passed away. And the one who was seated on the throne said, See, I am making all things new. Also, he said, write this, for these words are trustworthy and true. Then he said to me, it is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. The sequence hymn is in your dark blue hymnals again, number 694. 694 in the dark blue hymnals. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory, Glory to you, Lord Christ. When Mary came where Jesus was and saw him, she knelt at his feet and said to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping, and the Jews who came with her also weeping, he was greatly disturbed in spirit and deeply moved. He said, 
Where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. Jesus began to weep. So the Jews said, see how he loved him. But some of them said, could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man have kept this man from dying? Then Jesus, again greatly disturbed, came to the tomb. It was a cave, and a stone was laying against it. Jesus said, take away the stone. Martha, the, city of the, the, the sister of the dead man, said to him, Lord, already there is a stench, because he has been dead for four days. Jesus said to her, did I not tell you that if you believed, you would see the glory of God? So they took away the stone. And Jesus looked upward and said, Father, I thank you for having heard me. I knew that you always hear me. But I have said this for the sake of the crowd standing here, so that they might believe that you sent me. When he had said this, he cried out with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, his hands and feet bound with strips of cloth, and his face wrapped in a cloth. Jesus said to them, unbind him and let him go. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be always acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. So today, of course, is, is Halloween. Halloween nowadays for little kids to get dressed up and go from house to house getting candy. But it used to, maybe, in, uh, in, I think in many minds still does, have, have a broader significance. People sometimes say this is a day when the veil between the worlds is thin, when somehow communication with the dead is maybe more possible. Well, tomorrow, November 1st, it's All Saints Day. All Saints Day, one of the holiest days of the entire Christian year. Literally, the word Halloween comes from All Hallows, All Saints Eve. Tomorrow, uh, All Saints Day. And on All Saints Day, we remember especially the martyrs, but we remember more generally the, the great saints of the tradition. I mentioned this in my announcements, so we remember Paul and Peter and so on. And then on November 2nd, it's All Souls Day, and All Souls Day is technically the day that we, we really focus on the saints from our own lives, the people that, that we have loved who have entered into God's nearer presence. So what we're doing for this service, for the next hour, is kind of combining all three, I suppose. And, and at any rate, you can say they have this in common, that all three of these days invite us in their different ways to, to look back with gratitude at the people who have gone before us, I say both the great saints and the saints from our own lives. And then we look forward. We look forward in hope to our eventual reunion with, with all the saints when we enter into what the great chorus of angels and archangels and all the company of heaven, including those that we have loved. So we look forward in, in hope, and this is, this is a big part of our Christian hope. Now, sometimes people ask me what, what I think it's going to be like when we get to heaven. And if you've ever been a part of one of these conversations with me, I always have the same answer, which is, I, I don't have any idea. <laughs> this is well above my pay grade in terms of the details. What we do get in the Bible and in our tradition are, are tantalizing hints that are about things to come. But it's, it is hard for me, at least, to put together a, a coherent picture that I could really say, with real certainty, this is the biblical picture. This is the revealed image of, of what heaven is going to be like that, that God has given to us. So here's an analogy for how at least I tend to approach this. I think I've told this story before. Uh, when my children were little, I did what I take a lot of parents' strategy to be. I would, I would use counting to make them do what I'd want. So I'd say, Benjamin, Nicholas, by the time I get to say five, you better have done whatever. Get out of the bathtub. One. Two. I'm trying to be as ominous as I can at this point. So my children were not rebellious. Normally, when I said, I'm counting, and I start to count, they would start to scurry. 
they'd be moving in the direction of, of doing whatever it is I was trying to make them do. But one time, my sweet elder son, Benjamin, said, Daddy, what happens at five? <laughs> like, you know, he's, he's always been a smart kid. He's thinking, you know, it might be worth it. <laughs> a little extra time in the bathtub. <laughs> so I, 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 didn't, I hadn't thought it through. I didn't have a plan. So I said to him, Benjamin, here, here's what I can tell you. It would be bad. <laughs> it, it might be really bad. So this is how I think about heaven, except in reverse. I feel like saying, sometimes I say to God, God, help me. What's it going to be like? And God says, you don't need to worry about these details. Here's what you need to know. It's going to be good. It's, it's going to be really good. And mostly that pretty well satisfies me. Day in, day out, I'm happy to leave this in God's hands. But I do wonder. And so here's now my imagination. Everything else that you get from now on is my imagination, my own version of the Christian hope of what it means to join the angels and archangels and all the company of heaven surrounding God and experiencing, experiencing the kingdom of God in all of its fullness. So as I think about, about this, I think, I think first about people. Who's going to be there? How's that going to be? And, and so here's the first thing I believe. I believe there's going to be a lot of people there. There's going to be a, a whole lot of people. I just think about the God that we know in Jesus Christ, the God who loves us enough to say that even when you are in a state of sin and rebellion against me, I'm going to come and I'm going to be incarnate and I'm going to live among you and I'm going to put up with all kind of grief that I do not have to put up with and you will misunderstand me and you will mistreat me and in the end you will kill me and I'll go through all of that because I love you enough that I want to make it possible for us to spend eternity together. Now, a God who loves like that, a God who forgives like that, there's going to be a lot of people there. <laughs> and so here's my first thing, as I imagine myself wandering around, day one for me in heaven. I acknowledge that there's a little presumption there, but let's for the moment play, bear with me. <laughs> so my day, first day in heaven, and I'm walking around, bumping into people I, I knew, and at least a few times I'll be thinking, hmm, <laughs> Who'd have thought you would be here? <laughs> right? and, and this is heaven, and so that'd be okay. And the people might say back to me, you know, I did not expect to see you. And, and then, because it's heaven, we can kind of laugh and maybe even have a little hug and give thanks to God, whose grace is big enough to include me and whoever it is who has irritated me so in, uh, in my past. But then keep going. Think about folks... These are the harder ones to think about, the folks who have harmed us and maybe really harmed us are the people that, that we have harmed. And, and so what about if they're there? And, and you know, so a lot of people say, well, I think by the, if we are in heaven, we're not even going to remember all the bad stuff that happened to us. And that may be right, but that's actually not my picture. I think to myself, Jesus remembered being denied, by Peter. He remember getting crucified. He's our picture. We too, I think, are going to remember the stuff that has happened to us, but we will have been healed. So it won't be raw and painful in the way that painful memories can be now. This is my image. And so I do imagine seeing some of those folks, and that's a harder first conversation. You know, so you think, all right, I'm sorry where I forgive. And there's, of course, the big ones, the big hurts, but you could also think about it as the littler hurts. I, I pictured, I did, for the record, tell Carrie about this. Uh, I picture bumping into Carrie, and all of my thoughts and all of my actions are revealed. And it turns out that some of those thoughts and actions were kind of petty and mean-spirited, and Carrie sees all of that, and I have to say... Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry about all that. But it is heaven. And so again, we've experienced healing and forgiveness and love. And so it's made okay. And so I picture, there we are in heaven, a lot of people together, 
and everything that was painful behind us, and now us united with each other in love to spend eternity together. That's a big part of the Christian hope for me, and I think surely for all of us. But that's not the whole of the Christian hope, because it's still God who's part of the deal. And so, so here, and here's another analogy. I, I imagine myself, there I am, my first day in heaven, and it's a little bit like coming out of a shady house onto a beach on a bright and sunny day. And so it's hard to see. You know, you're sort of squinting, put your eye sunglasses on, get a hat, and sort of walk around and like, oh, look, there's Terry, there's Jude, Susan. Right? So you're doing all that. And then at some point somebody says, you know, you're probably as ready as you're ever going to be. Now picture yourself on the beach. Here comes the sun to talk to you. Think about that kind of overwhelming heat and light. It's good, but, but overwhelming. And how do, we just, how do we even begin to picture that moment? Well, I think a little bit about the end of the book of Job. We've been working through that the last several weeks, although we're done with it now. And you do get at the end of Job this magnificent picture of God who comes to Job and who talks about all of creation. And God says, I am the Lord of all of it. Who are you? Well, now we can go farther than Job could have done. I mean, what Job thought, as best we could tell, is creation is a few thousand years old. We'd say it's several billion I don't have any idea how big they thought the creation used to be when Job was running around, but, but here's what we can say. The distance between stars is so astronomical, we can't, we can't wrap our mind around it. And here's God, who is the Lord of it all, right here, talking to me, talking to you. Harvey, welcome. It's really good to see you. I have been waiting for you to get here. Enter into the joy of your Lord. And you think, well, how might that, that moment feel? You know, still just got to imagine. I think here's one thing I would likely feel. Humility. Whatever pretensions I have in terms of my own gifts and accomplishments, there I am in the presence of God, the Lord of the cosmos, and you're like, well, I'm going to have to let some of that go. And then I think about maybe embarrassment. Not so much guilt or shame, although that could be true too, but, but embarrassment because suddenly confronted with all that God is and you think about all those times that I just didn't pay attention, that I acted like other things were more important. But of course, what we say, this is essential to the Christian gospel, is that what we'll mostly feel is love. This love that's just radiating out of God and surrounding us and penetrating us and, and calling forth from us God's, our love for God in return. And this love just circling around and embracing us and uniting us with God and uniting us with other people and uniting us forever. That's my picture. That's, that's my version of the Christian hope. And so on this day, on this day when we celebrate All Saints Day, I give thanks to God for Christ, for the Christ who comes to us to show us the way, for Christ who comes to us as the way, for Christ who comes to us as the destination, the place we're going. And I say especially on All Saints, I give thanks to God for those who have preceded us along the way and our companions on the journey who were a little ahead of us. And my prayer is that God will continue to remind us of that Christian hope, of that place that we're going, and where God will help us even now to live as God's true children. And I say that in Christ's name. Amen. Now please, <clears throat> please stand as you are able and let us affirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed, which you can find on page 358 in the Book of Common Prayer. Again, that's page 358.
We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We continue now with the prayers of the people and the litany. Prayers of the people will be read from the pages in our pamphlet, A Litany and Celebration of God's Saints. We give thanks to you, O God, for all your servants and witnesses in times past. For Abraham, the father of believers, and Sarah, his wife. For Moses, the lawgiver, and Aaron, the priest. For Jesus, the Christ, your son and worker, Savior of all humanity. And king of all saints. For the first disciples who left all to follow Jesus. For the messengers known and unknown who brought good news to our country. For all who have gone to the ends of the earth to share your love. For the martyrs, innocents, and saints in every age and land. We give thanks to you, O God, for the servants from this congregation and their loved ones who have died in the past year, including Joe Minio, Mona Murphy, Paul Jubert, Marie Berry, John O'Hare, Janice McKay, Annette Quatrano, and Chester Curris. And we give thanks to you for other members of God's family whom we name before you this day. John Orsi, James and Anna Amabile, and if there's any others, you may say them aloud at this time. My grandparents, Charlie, and Pat, We thank you for life on this earth, even as we look to our future life with you in heaven. Grant us to become partakers of that joy with this earthly life in us. All together, we praise you, you, O God, for the hope we find in Jesus Christ. Be with us until we fully come into your presence, where at your right hand there are pleasures forevermore. All glory to you be to you, the author and creator of life. Amen. and turning back in the prayer book to page 360. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. 
we have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Please stand as you're able for the peace. And the peace of the Lord be always with you. So let us greet one another from afar, peacing in place. Peace, 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 peace. And after you have peace to your satisfaction, uh, feel free to have a seat while uh, Terry sets the table. We did our litany, of course, um, in lieu of the regular prayers of the people. We didn't have special prayer requests, but I do just want to lift up uh, Barbara and Norm Lefebvre, who left today to head down to Florida. And so we pray for safe travels for them. Our service continues now with the Great Thanksgiving Eucharistic Prayer A, and that begins on page 361 in the Book of Common Prayer. Again, that's page 361. The Lord be with you. And also, also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift, we lift them, them to the, to the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, it is right, right to give God, God thanks and praise. and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. For in the multitude of your saints, you have surrounded us with a great cloud of witnesses, that we might rejoice in their fellowship 
and run with endurance the race that is set before us. And together with them, receive the crown of glory that never fades away. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. sit as you are able. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself, and when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself, in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them. And said, drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ Christ has died. died. Christ Christ is risen. risen. Christ Christ will will come come again. again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, 
on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. gifts of God for you, the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Please stand as you're able for the post-communion prayer. 
And let us pray together the prayer on page 366 in the Book of Common Prayer. Again, that's page 366. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be upon you and remain with you this day and always. Amen. Please turn in your dark blue hymnals to number 293. 293. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.